Welcome to the second of our three videos of worship for the 21st of March 2021. Uh, we're going to have two Bible readings today, the Old Testament one to give the background of Melchizedek and the New Testament one to show how the writer to the Hebrews applies the uh, priesthood of Melchizedek uh, to our Lord Jesus. Today's reading is from Genesis 14. After Abram and Lot had settled in different places, there was a series of battles between the king of Elam and various other kings. Part of the fallout was that his army invaded Sodom and carried off goods and people, including Abram's nephew Lot and his possessions, since Lot was living in Sodom at the time. A man who had escaped came and reported this to Abram. When Abram heard that Lot had been taken captive, he called out his men and went in pursuit. During the night, he divided his men to attack the invading army and he routed them. He recovered all the goods that had been seized and brought back his nephew Lot and his possessions together with the women and the other people. After Abram returned from defeating the king of Elam and the kings allied with him, he was met by other friendly kings. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High and he blessed Abram, saying, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, and praise be to God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abram gave Melchizedek a tenth of everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now Susan is going to read our New Testament reading for us. This morning's reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 5 verses 5 to 10. So Christ also did not take upon himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, You are my son, today I have become your father. And he says in another place, You are a priest forever, in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he had suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. And now Ian is going to offer us a sermon on the Bible passages. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This morning I want to take us on a 2,000 year journey, beginning outside Salem at the time of Abraham. Stopping 1,000 years later with King David, then travelling on to the 1st century AD. I want to look this morning at who exactly is this character Melchizedek and how do we get to Jesus as being in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is only mentioned three times in the Bible, near the end of Genesis chapter 14, in Psalm 110 and in the letter to the Hebrews in a couple of chapters 5 and 7. Now we refer to Jesus as prophet, priest and king. We know that he was a prophet because he brought the word of God to the people. By the end of this talk, I hope that we will understand Jesus as also being priest and king. A priest intercedes on behalf of the people with God Almighty and the king dispenses justice. We do know that Melchizedek lived a thousand years before David wrote Psalm 110 and we know that David lived a thousand years before Christ so there is a sort of symmetry going on here 
Genesis 14 tells us that Abraham freed Lot and his family from captivity by the four kings from the east. And that a victorious Abraham was met by Melchizedek with bread and wine. Melchizedek was described as a priest king of the one true and eternal God. So we have a Canaanite priest king who is a worshipper of the one true creator God, greeting Abraham. More than this, Melchizedek blesses Abraham in the name of the one true creator God. This blessing is important as it shows that Melchizedek, by bestowing a blessing on Abraham, demonstrate that he is Abraham's superior. Furthermore, Abraham bestows a tithe of 10% of all the treasure that is taken from the four kings on Melchizedek, giving him the tribute owed to a superior person. That fact is important, as we shall see. In 1920, an archaeological find in the area showed us that a lot of Canaanites believed in a monotheistic creator God, whom they called Ael. Abraham was therefore not alone in his belief. The only difference is that God introduced himself to Abraham and the promises, as we know, were made. So the Jews regarded Abraham as the father of the nation. If you scroll forward to Moses and Aaron and to Levi, you get the beginnings of the priestly class and the birth of ritual sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. So priests had to come from down the line of Levi and high priests were from the line of Aaron. This carried on right to the time of Jesus the Messiah, rigidly set in stone. Now we scroll forward to the time of David, a thousand years before Christ. David was from the line of Judah, and the Messiah was expected to come from the same line. It is for this reason that one of the titles of Jesus is the Lion of Judah. If we look at Psalm 110, as we did during the praise and worship session, it is very interesting. It is divided into two stanzas. The first stanza is about the Messiah, and the second stanza is about the Messiah being a priest in the order of Melchizedek. So a thousand years after Melchizedek lived, David is saying that the Messiah is after the order of Melchizedek. So the Messiah is proclaimed priest and king by God the Father. Now when the word Lord in capital letters is used, it always refers to Jehovah. When the word Lord is used in lowercase, it refers to Adonai, the title of the Messiah. Now let's scroll forward again another thousand years to the first century AD and the beginnings of the Christian church, which was not only an offshoot of Judaism, but had begun to spread to the Gentiles, as we can see in the Acts of the Apostles, and in the various letters in what we now know as the New Testament. The writer to the Hebrews is addressing these Jews who believed in Jesus as the Messiah, but were facing persecution. A lot of them had had their property confiscated, and some of them were having second thoughts about following Jesus. Tradition told them that the priestly system was from the line of Abraham, through to Aaron and Levi and so on, down to the present day. They were used to sacrificing animals for the remission of sins, and some were backslided into re-following that tradition. So the writer to the Hebrews reminds them that the Messiah is from a superior line, the order of Melchizedek, which was established long before Aaron and Levi came on the scene. So Jesus is the Messiah and the preordained priest and king. The priestly class and the sacrificial system were not necessary once the Messiah had come. They were only a temporary arrangement until he came. They now had the one perfect sacrifice made for once and for all upon the cross. 
There was no need to keep sacrificing animals for the remission of sins, as Jesus had died to take all the sin upon himself. Priests who made the sacrifice were in need of forgiveness themselves, but Jesus was sinless, the perfect sacrifice to offer to God the Father. So again, who is this Melchizedek? Some theologians think of him as a historical figure, as a Canaanite priest king and the founder of Salem, or what we know now as Jerusalem. Some regard him as what theologians call a type, or someone pointing to a future revelation later on in history, of which more in a minute or two. And some think of Melchizedek as an appearance of Christ, known as a Christophany. To find out more about Melchizedek, we need to look at what the Jews of the time would have known about him. Now, a lot of Jews believed him to be Shem, the devout son of Noah, and their timelines do suggest that this is possible. We know from writings found outside the biblical canon that there was a fair bit of speculation about who he was. Josephus and Philo wrote about him, at his second Enoch and the Dead Sea Scrolls. They knew a lot about Melchizedek, most of which was speculation and mythology. Now, I've struggled to keep this talk short, so you will have to take my word for it that he was a historical character. He was not a Christophany, an appearance of Christ. He was also a type who pointed towards the Messiah as being both priest and king, as David related in Psalm 110. When Janet read the passage from John last week, the first line was a type Jesus referred to when he said, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. So now we know that Melchizedek is a priest king from Canaan, one who was superior to Abraham. And we know that David wrote Psalm 110 in the knowledge that the Messiah will be both priest and king in the order of Melchizedek. And we know now why Jesus is referred to as prophet, priest and king. We know that Jesus was a perfect sacrifice for sin, who died for the remission of our sins. And we know that he intercedes with the Father on our behalf, the risen Lord sat at God's right hand. Amen. The early church formulated a way of expressing our belief in this Jesus who is God for us. And they came up with the Apostles' Creed. Please join me as we say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. That's the end of the second of these three videos of worship, uh, and again, to follow us into the third, please just choose it when it appears on the screen after I've finished speaking. I will see you there. <laughs>